This is the Hockey Podcast Network, your home for hockey talk on every team in the NHL. Calgary Flames fans, it's time for Flames Unfiltered. Entertaining and controversial hockey talk with your host, Brad Burry. I hate the All-Star break. Man, I hate the CBA break more. But this... This takes it to a new level. Good evening. Welcome to Flames Unfiltered, episode 49. I am the host of the show, Brad Brood. We are recording this on a late Sunday evening, March 15th, 2020. And well, I know why I pay for a Netflix subscription now. Yep, I've been watching it for pretty much the first time since I've gotten it. My kids have pretty much got my money's worth out of it, but uh, I'm watching it now because I'm watching stuff I never thought I would watch. I watched a show on baseball cards last night. It was pretty interesting. I watched a show, a couple crime documentaries last night, Um, a movie. I don't even remember the name of it. Pretty good show though. Um, Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I think that's what most people are doing right now. Hopefully they're doing it and staying home and and, and being healthy. Um, it's a scary time in the world. It, it's it's unprecedented. Obviously, never happened in my lifetime. Uh, t- talking with my grandparents and stuff, it's never happened in their lifetime. And uh, my parents and you know, we just hope all the people out there, uh, you know, just be safe. Um, you know, one of the things that's been difficult as a, as a fan. Um, is at least, you know, when we're in the off season and there's no games being played, um, there's signings, there's free agency, there's draft, there's prospect camps, there's things, there's things going on, there's things to get us going, there's things to look forward to, to next uh, next year, there's things to talk about for next year. But we're we're just on hold, like we're on hold, 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 um, where nothing can be done, no transactions can be done, um, just things are on pause. We don't know if we're going to, you know, continue, we don't, we don't know anything, Um it's it's crazy. Um, everything's in stop mode. It's driving me crazy. It's driving me nuts. I, I hate it. Um, I really miss hockey. Um, you know, I really miss sports as a whole. Um, when hockey is in the off season, you know, I, I, I'll flip a baseball game on or I'll flip, uh, you know, golf on or whatnot. Those are kind of my two fallbacks when hockey's not on. But um, when there's nothing, um, there's just really nothing. And it, it's... Uh, it's scary. I miss that excitement. I miss that an anticipation. Um, it's a sad and it's a it's a scary time in the world right now. Um, this is definitely something. The coronavirus, uh, COVID nineteen, it, it's something we should really, really take serious. And I and I hope everybody is. And I hope with everything going on and and things being canceled, and I, I hope people are just staying home. Um, I, I really do. We we need to get this. I'm taken care of, and uh, when we get through this, because we're, we're tough, we're strong. When we get through this, I hope this brings both Canada and the U.S. back to reality and makes us realize what's really important in life, and that's health. Because without health, you know, we got we got nothing. Today on the episode, we are going to talk about a season suspended how that announcement came out and what was my reaction? What was my people around me's reaction? We'll talk um, a little bit about the flames ownership group and how they're being drugged through the mud right now about not paying part-time employees. And I know that has changed here in the last day, but um, I'll tell you why I think it's wrong that they're being drugged through the mud. Uh, Then we'll take a short dive into a real short version of flames news. Talk Harvey's dog house I still got one this week, no hockey, but I got somebody I'm mad at. Fan question, we'll take a look at the Western Conference playoff race in hopes, in hopes that we can get this thing going again, and then it's time to uh, get back to your Netflix episodes. So uh, yeah, that's what we got going today. Enjoy the show. The Hockey Podcast Network, which Flames Unfiltered is very proud to be a part of, has a great podcast called Ice Analytics. It's a deep dive into hockey analytics, statistical analysis, and how it affects your favorite team. Standings, trades, signings, it's all on Ice Analytics. 
on the Hockey Podcast Network. Every team, everywhere, the Hockey Podcast Network. Well, this is probably the saddest part of the show. Yeah. Game recaps. Yeah, none. A week ago tonight was the last Flames game. Against Vegas, we lost 5-3. to three. Boy, when you think back, you didn't even consider a week ago that we'd be sitting in the position that we are today. The scary part of that is, what are we going to be sitting in a week from tonight? Hopefully it's good. Hopefully things we can turn around. And hopefully, um, as a world, not even as a country or a continent, as a world, I hope we can uh, we can fight through this. Well, updates will be coming daily from the National Hockey League on the current status. Um, I think we'll get some more information on Monday. Um, there's always stuff coming out. Um, I'm seeing updates all the time. Today I saw that uh, the CDC in America has banned any gatherings over 50 people for the next eight weeks. Well, that does not make it look good for hockey, much less any sport, getting going and getting back on track in the near future. It really doesn't. Um, But you know what? As quick as things uh, have gone bad, we can hope that they they go good. Um, Check out Inside Edge Hockey News um, for a stay of a special section on their website um, with coronavirus uh, that... And how it affects the NHL and updates as the NHL are giving them out um, from various different uh, inside sources in the National Hockey League, and um, they'll, they update that as a, as every day goes on. So check that out on Inside Edge Hockey News. That'll hopefully keep you a little bit updated, and uh, hopefully get us through this uh, this mess and get us back into hockey. Inside Edge Hockey News is your source for top notch NHL podcasts. News and rankings. Check out InsideEdgeHockeyNews.com. InsideEdgeHockeyNews.com. All right, hockey fans. Um, yeah, <laughs> last week was a big week. We talked a little bit about Wednesday night. Um, that's when kind of when, when things kind of went haywire. Um, Thursday was the official announcement. Um, well, let's kind of let's kind of re- recap. Last Friday, uh, the San Jose Sharks were the first team to close their locker room to the media as a precaution. On Saturday, several teams, um, including the Flames, followed suit. Media obligations were you know, held as usual, but players were available upon request in the hallway. Um, same occurred on Sunday. Everything was, seemed to be going in, in that progress. Um, much talk we heard on Monday about the possibility of uh, teams playing to no fans and all-day money th- Things kind of change a little bit. And then on to Tuesday, um, locker room restrictions, everything like that. That kind of went league-wide on Wednesday. Then Wednesday night, um, things went patch it crazy, I guess is the best way to, to ter- put it into terms. Um, I'll give you what happened, and then I'll tell you kind of my story on how it went through. But Wednesday night, it became clear that things were, uh, were going bad. A game between the Oklahoma City Thunder, Utah Jazz was delayed and then canceled uh, when a Jazz player had tested positive for COVID-19. The NBA postponed their season that night immediately. All games um, games that night late were even stopped. Um, on Thursday, the National Hockey League followed suit, and uh, so did every sport in <laughs> known to man. Um, it, it all followed suit on on. Thursday. Um, Wednesday evening, I was sitting at a, a junior hockey game in the North American Hockey League. Um, sitting there with, with two buddies, just wa- watching a game that was, I don't know, not a bad game, not a great game, but uh, just watching it. We were chatting and talked a little bit about this coronavirus. Um, our worries, we did make the remark, jokingly actually, yeah, is this the last game we'll get to go to this year? Um. Yeah, we, we, we joked about it. Uh, then, during the first intermission, I believe, my phone buzzed, and then it buzzed again, and it buzzed again, and then it went ding again, and I'm like, what is going on? 
So I look and uh, yeah, my Twitter's blowing up. My tweet, uh, my I'm getting messages from people that uh, Utah Jazz player tested positive and uh, that was it. Uh, that game was canceled. And then a few minutes later, the NBA season's done. And then the NHL's talking about it and more information was going to come out Wednesday evening. I recorded our last episode of Flames Unfiltered, um, but we didn't know for sure at that time. Um, we thought maybe they would lean a little more towards playing in front of no fans like Columbus had already planned on doing and San Jose. And then as we woke Thursday morning and even late Wednesday night after I recorded, um, things I was seeing thoughts, messages I was getting, uh, yeah, it just didn't look good. It just didn't look good. And then I pretty much knew the inevitable was coming on Thursday morning with the NHL meeting at noon. Um, I knew it was just going to be a matter of time, and I knew that um, our season was going to be suspended. My reaction initially was anger. We're jumping the gun. This isn't that bad. More people die from the flu every year. Um, I had all those emotions. I had all those feelings. Probably because I was being selfish. Um, don't like not having hockey. Don't like not having sports. And quite honestly, don't like having my life. Um, and it's routine adjusted, altered, um, in any way we're spoiled. As I thought about it more, I've changed my mind. And as this week has progressed, I've changed my mind a lot Today, I really, really changed my mind. Um, I feel optimistic in the fact that I don't feel like things are getting bad really quick. And I don't know if that's because of the, the quick steps the American and Canadian governments have done to slow the spread. I hope that it's working. I feel like we're doing everything in our power that we can to uh, to curb this. I also realized the importance of sports. It's boring without sports. My routine has changed. My plans. My looking forward to big games. Hell, any game. My happiness has been diminished. I've been on edge, shorter tempered. Until today. Today, I don't know why today. As I sat on a Sunday afternoon and I watched states, including my state tonight, which I spent some time working with that, close schools. I see hotels in Vegas closing down. I see Disney World, Disneyland. I see big, big, big changes in America and Canada. And I know this is bigger than sports. I know it is. No, thankfully, it hasn't affected me health, with my health or my families or my close loved ones or my friends, or my co-workers. But the fact that it could scares me. Yeah, I want hockey back, but I want health first. Originally thought it'd be a minimum 30 days before we would learn anything about the NHL. And I think we will learn a lot this week. But what I'm afraid is we're not going to be happy with what we hear. With what came out with the CDC tonight and an eight-week timetable on groups of 50 or more, that leads me to believe that it might be the end of the season. I have not given up hope. I like the fact that Earlier or later in last week, the NHL and NHLPA signed off an agreement to where players are now asked to self-quarantine in their NHL's home city. And at some point, to be determined later, players may skate in an NHL facility in small groups. Talk from Donald Fear that that could be as soon as next week. Near the end of this process, plans for a mini camp before and if the season resumes. 
we pray it does. I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer. But with what came out from the CDC today, it scares me that uh, you wait eight weeks. That puts us at, well, April 15th, May 15th. That might be too late for a season. I don't know. Maybe we start the playoffs right from there. Maybe we alter the forms. And in upcoming episodes, we are going to talk about some ideas I have and uh, what may just happen as this progresses. It's a scary time in this country. I was angry. I was upset. But reality has hit me, and I understand the importance of this. Health should be everybody's number one priority. NHL news, opinions, and controversy. All right, now I got a bone to pick. People spent the whole weekend ripping the Flames' ownership for deciding not to pay their part-time employees. It was announced on Friday that and via email to all their employees that they would not be paying them. People freaked out and said, wait a minute, Flames majority owner Murray Edwards is worth $1.5 billion. Why are we not paying them? There's minority owners also. There's other factors, guys. There's other factors. Numerous teams have said they were going to pay, but lots have said they weren't. 12 clubs, this is at the time I record this, it's changing all the time here, guys. Anaheim, Dallas, Detroit, Florida, Nashville, New Jersey, Philly, Pittsburgh, San Jose, Tampa Bay, Toronto, and Washington all said that they were going to pay. 17 other clubs have not. And as for the Flames, yeah, as disappointing as it was, they chose not to. Now today, well, and let's go back to that. They received a boatload of heat, Facebook. But guys, you don't understand. Like, this is a business. The Flames are losing, are set to lose a ton of money. A ton of money on this. And yes, I know they're billionaires. But this is where the government is going to step in in America. And I think they are in Canada too. And help out companies with payroll. This is out of the flames control. This is out of the other, any NHL clubs control. Now on Sunday, the flames, Calgary sports and entertainment corporation announced a compensation for part-time employees, an income bridge system that will basically pay up to 95% of their average earnings. Pat Steinberg tweeted, this program will provide part-time employees eligible to receive EI to receive a top-up top payment, which will provide up to 95% of the regular average earnings. If not eligible to receive EI, you will receive the equivalent CSEC top-up proportion. They're going to get taken care of. Everybody's going to get taken care of. All of Canada is going to band together and all of America is going to band together to take care of our neighbors. This is what countries that are great, like America and Canada, do in a time of need. Bashing businesses who are trying to make everything work perfectly is not going to help. Now, the fans I saw on Facebook bashing the Flames ownership group are the same fans that next year when the Flames say, sorry, we can't sign that guy because we had to spend all the money to make sure that all of our employees were taken care of during a time off, ate up our money, now we can't sign the superstar. The Flames fans would freak the hell out. And quite honestly, you know what? What they've decided to pay these wages is good. It's the right thing to do. And it'll pay off in the end. But now next year when maybe they can't sign the guy that you want them to sign or they can't afford an $8 million guy or something, everybody better remember what they've done for this city. 
and how much they're doing for the arena program and everything else involved with that. $275 million for a new building. That is a lot for the city of Calgary. The Flames do a ton. They do a ton of charity work. No one should be ripping this team because they've always, always went above and beyond for this community. Everybody's going to do their best. Everybody is going to try to help everybody. And I know with what I've seen with America and Canada is they'll make it work. NHL players will be paid, which to me is kind of puzzling because I didn't see any fans freaking out because the NHL players weren't helping. When a few NHL players did step up to help, many of them right here in our own city of Calgary, they got all the praise in the world, but the ones that didn't step up didn't get run through the mud. Everybody's doing their best. Everybody's trying to help. Players were to receive three final paychecks for the 1920 or 2019-2020 season. They were scheduled last Friday was one, March 23rd was one, and April 4th was one. I don't want anybody to suffer on this. Is there some unprecedented times in the continent and uh, everybody needs to be taken care of? CoolHockey.com is your number one source for authentic and customized NHL jerseys. Use promo code THPN and receive 25% off your order. CoolHockey.com CoolHockey.com Jerseys online since 99. All right, Flames fans, time to talk a little Flames news. We're rolling to Harvey's Doghouse, and then we got a fan question. Flames news, not a lot going on just with... uh, with the season being shut down temporarily um, on a sad news, former president and CEO of the Calgary flames, Ken King passed away at the age of 68, his six year battle with lung cancer. Although Valent, he passed away the earlier this or actually on Thursday, he will be missed by the city of Calgary and the Calgary flames organization. Now it's time to talk a little Harvey's Doghouse. And this is where I usually rip on a player. But I can't rip on a player right now because uh, most of them are sitting in their house playing their Xbox and watching Netflix like I am. But I do have to rip on somebody. I want to rip on all the people who are hoarding supplies. Why the hell we're doing this, I have no idea. Is it okay to have a little bit extra right now to protect you and your family in case stores were ever to be shut down, which is a long ways away from happening? But people who are buying 8,000 rolls of toilet paper is beyond me. I did not know a side effect of coronavirus is shitting yourself. Buy the amount of toilet paper you need for eight weeks. That's plenty of time. Clorox wipes you cannot find, hand sanitizer you cannot find, bottled water in some places has been hard to find. I went shopping, normal shopping, grocery shopping. I thought I would buy a little bit extra in case things got worse to get me through it. I could not find any ramen noodles. Evidently, that's what we need to fight off coronavirus. No strawberries, Um, no eggs. I I witnessed a lady buying 10 dozen eggs. Eggs go bad, ma'am. How long do you think those will last? And how many eggs do you eat in a month? I was in a grocery store where I had no milk or bread. Come on, people. What in the hell? This is a virus. We're not going in a bomb shelter for three months. Don't hoard. Don't be an asshole. Fan question from Greg Zabel of Alberta didn't give me a city to city. He's from Alberta. I'll take that. And his question is, let's say the season restarts in mid-April and they shorten the playoff season to a best of five. A legitimate, probably a solution to this. And quite honestly, I don't know if it'll be able to start in mid-April, but wishful thinking. What team in the Western Conference benefits the most from the layoff And what team benefits the most from a best-of-five series? 
Let's talk the layoff first. Three teams came to mind, two especially came to mind on the layoff. And that number one is the Colorado Avalanche. They have a ton of key injuries. And although they are rolling, they are a team that really could use the time for healing. Another team that really could use it is the Vancouver Canucks. They have key injuries. Jacob Markstrom, Besser is back. He just came back. Um, But they have injuries. But mostly they are struggling too. And maybe getting those guys back, new attitude in the locker room, that changes those struggles. Another team that wasn't too unhappy to see this break come is the Dallas Stars, who are 3-5-2 and and find themselves slip, slip, slipping out of a playoff spot. I can't help but think this break won't help them. As for the best of five format, I don't know that that changes things a whole bunch. I think it does a little bit, and I think it helps the underdogs. I think it helps the lower team seeds. Um, It's easier for lower seeds to win shorter series. They get off to a quick 2-0, then they only got one more to go. That makes a difference. Other than that, though, I don't think a best of five changes things all that much. Um, I don't know, Greg. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when this gets solved. Um, I do hope, and I love your mid-April. I would love, love, love that. Um, unfortunately, I just, I don't know. I don't feel like that's going to happen. I do think Vancouver and Colorado will, in the Western Conference, benefit the most from the break, and we'll see. Hopefully, we can get back to some hockey and see how everything plays out. Get all your Flames Unfiltered podcasts, team news, team updates, and highlights at flamesunfiltered.com. Well, here's a part of the show where we usually talk game previews and preview games coming up in the near future before our next episode. Well, we got nothing, man. We got nothing. I'll tweet out anytime I see updates. Things changing in the hockey world as it relates to the coronavirus. I will tweet them out on Flames Unfiltered or at Flames Unfiltered on Twitter. Let's hypothetically think that we're going to get back to hockey action here soon. And let's take a quick look at where the playoffs in the Western Conference sit as today. Top three teams in the Central, St. Louis, Colorado, Dallas. Right from one, two, three. In the Pacific, Vegas, Edmonton, Calgary, the two wild card spots currently are held by Winnipeg and Nashville. Vegas or Vancouver is in a tie for Nashville, but lose a tiebreaker. Minnesota one back of Nashville. Arizona four back. That might be too far now. And Chicago six back. If the playoffs started today, St. Louis would be taking on Nashville. Boy, the Blues would not like that. How would you like that? Be the best team in the Western Conference. You get Nashville. In the first round. That is not not what the St. Louis Blues want. Vegas would be taking on Winnipeg. That would be a great, great series. Colorado would be taking on Dallas. And we would finally, finally, finally get our wish. The Calgary Flames would be taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Say it with me. Let's pray every day that we can get back to hockey. We can stay healthy. And we can see a battle of Alberta. Check back Thursday for another episode on the Hockey Podcast Network and flamesunfiltered.com. Planning ahead, looking at getting some guests scheduled, talking about the season thus far for the Calgary Flames and the troubles and turmoil. Updates every single episode of where we stand if we're coming back to hockey. It's a scary time in this world. Please, everyone, be safe. Wash your hands. Stay home. Please don't hoard food or supplies. We need to band together. Stay safe. There's nothing more important than our health. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter, at Flame Unfiltered. And also make sure you check out our Facebook page, at Flames Unfiltered. Check out host Brad Bruin on Twitter, 
at Brad Brood. And if you like what you hear, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can find Flames Unfiltered on all the major podcast players. Consider subscribing to the Inside Edge Hockey News on Patreon. That'll get you exclusive content and much more. Thanks again and enjoy the hockey. Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network on Twitter at HockeyPodNet. New episodes every Monday and Thursday. Download at the HockeyPodcastNetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. This has been a production of Inside Edge Hockey News Radio, brought to you by the Hockey Podcast Network. This production is copyrighted and distributed by the Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.